Man, this chapter's pretty long. Indeed. Did we have any uh We did have tips, tips to, read, to do this time. Oh no, we read those. We yeah, read we those did. Right we got those end. at the end of the last episode. Right, right, right. We got them in under the wire. We're good. We're all good here. Let's just continue. Keichi. Oh, that's me. Keichi. Is this his dad, I guess? Am Probably, I his... unless we have it swapped. Yeah. Am I his dad? I thought you were. Oh, I'll just leave him alone. His friends went missing. Must be really hard for him. <laughs> I feel bad, because I... Isn't he also, like... <laughs> Isn't he what? <laughs> I don't remember what voice we gave. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> Normally, my dad never shows me any consideration, but this time, he did. Shouldn't Keiichi stay home from school for a while, too? I think it would be safer not to go into the place to do something about this. Yep. Maybe. Compared to what could happen, taking a few days off wouldn't be a bad idea. See, his parents know something. Anyway, how is it logical not to close <laughs> a school during such a dangerous situation, huh? What do those <laughs> teachers think our children are, huh? Nah. <laughs> yeah, what kind of person would show concern for their child during a slew of public disappearances? That shows guilt. I <laughs> know as well as I do, that's not what I was saying. <laughs> and yet... Mom and Dad were getting pretty riled up, but at this point I couldn't care less. Besides, that wasn't the only thing I, could care I couldn't care less about. The breakfast table, the food in front of me, the time, date, myself, I really had no interest in anything. This feeling it was like a dead fog in my mind. I felt like getting dizzy after taking strong medication. Oh good, and now without his friends there to keep him out of it, he's right back where he right back into familiar depression, KG. I knew you weren't gone forever, buddy. <laughs> Welcome back. Mm, KG, how your studies going, buddy? You uh gotten further than the other kids, ain't ya? If you have, then uh you could take a few days off, alright? I didn't even feel like answering my dad's silly new voice. <laughs> Today was Thursday. Only four days had passed since the Watanagashi Festival. Such a short time, and yet now things were completely different. Yeah, didn't he die on the third night? Or, like, that's when he killed... Was it the third day after Watanagashi, last on Chapter 1? It wasn't that many days after where, where he wound up killing Yeah, Reddit. I feel like it... I feel like the wasn't I feel like it didn't take this long last time for things to get congratulations weird and fall Subaru apart. you made it to day four <laughs> <laughs> everything had changed the tranquil village bright and clear as if it were an Indian summer had undergone a total reversal people were made to disappear every night and we couldn't even relax while walking about in broad daylight the village had become a world of fear I had no right to curse this outcome after all the one responsible for everything was me that night, I couldn't resist my honestly tiny little and incredibly stupid curiosity, and I broke the taboo. Uh, b -b 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 this isn't somewhere we should be going, is it? Uh, it's not. It's a crime to force your way to a locked building, even if you don't steal not anything. Shion, now that you know they weren't having some secret rendezvous, you've had a knife, right? I don't want to do something like this. What if Rika Chan's dance ends while we're messing around here? I prattled on as I took the lock from Tomatake-san's hands and put it back on the door. I'll forget everything I saw here, so come on, let's go, let's go! Takano-san was fretting, but I pushed her away. Tomatake-san grinned painfully. Shion's shoulders drooped as if to call me an idiot. Even so, I didn't care. I pushed everyone farther and farther away. Rika-chan's dance was still going on. And then at last her dance was brought to a close with a roaring applause. I, too, until my hands turned red, I clapped. And I clapped. Ding dong. Isn't that Rana Chan? She's here because it's your usual meetup time, isn't she? I looked up at the clock. It was five minutes past my time to meet with Rena. Uh, hey, Keiji, shouldn't you take a few days off from school, bud? You, uh, you thought about doing that? Sounds like a good idea, bro. <laughs> You know what? You're right, strange voice, Dad. Thank you for being so considerate. No problem, bud. Just don't ever go in the other uh, two-thirds of the house where I keep my murder stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I rose from my seat, went to the entrance to greet Rena. 
Good morning. We're going to school as a group starting today, so you can't be late. Oh, that's right. If we the ones farthest away were to be late, the younger kids on the way there would be waiting for us. Um, I think I'm going to take some time off of school. Hmm. Okay. Rena answered shortly, nodding. I think you should do whatever's best for you, Keichi-kun. So you don't need to feel that you're weak or anything. <sighs> Rena, you are really understanding, you know that? <laughs> you're I a have... really good friend. I don't know if I ever told you that, but I... We've only known each other for like a month, but I really value our friendship. That's great. I'm sure that in every possible world, you value it just as much and nothing horrible happens. I couldn't happens. imagine any things going any other way. Oh, and here, it's a notice they're sending around. Could you give it to your mom? I think it has a lot of important announcements in it. I uh, took the notice. There were a lot more pages than normal. One on the top announced the disappearance of the mayor, Rika-chan Sadako, and that they wanted any information about them it made my heart ache. The police are looking as best they can, too. They'll find them for sure. Just be patient, okay? Rena said, smiling in an attempt to give me courage. Rather than that, though, her smile looked like it was because she herself wanted to believe they were safe. Rena, you're not going to question me. Nope. Rena, you know, don't you, about that night, what I... Do you mean when you snuck into the ritual storehouse? I was speechless for a moment, but then I bit my leap. Made up my mind about it and nodded a little. How did she figure that out? Who told Everyone her? in town knows. Everyone in town... That it was Keiichi that did it? Everyone in town knows that four people went into the ritual storehouse and who they were. I see. So it's all out in the open then. Really, I shouldn't do bad things like that. Mi-chan was really mad. So she was upset. Suppose she would have been. I don't think she was as angry about you sneaking in there, though. As much as about you hiding it from her. Huh. Maybe Keiichi-kun... Maybe you should have told her yourself and apologized. I should have told her myself and apologized. That troubled me. Just one week ago, I did something that I myself should have apologized to Mion for. I'd hurt her badly. However, I hadn't realized it at all. Plus, with the, all the confusion that Shion's appearance had brought, I still hadn't been able to talk to Mion about it. You know what, Rena? You're right. Never, never really realize anything until you tell me. Okay, Chikun. Hypothetically, if you had admitted you'd done something wrong right away and apologized to Mi-chan, I wonder if Rika-chan and Sadoko-chan wouldn't have had to disappear. Oof. Rena, Rena, Rena. <laughs> Never mind, I'm retracting that. That was awful. <laughs> what an awful thing to say to someone. I couldn't answer right away. I couldn't admit to that. Wasn't Rena telling me right now, though, that I should have admitted to my crime sooner? If I had done that and apologized, would things not have gone in such a horrible direction? And his eyes were filled with kindness, but they weren't naive enough to forgive me for keeping silent. And they stared fixedly into my own. <sighs> yeah, you're right. If I had admitted my crime sooner, then Rika-chan and Sadako wouldn't have had to die or disappear. Smack! The palm of Rena's hand slapped me in the cheek. I stood there unmoving. My head had still tilted in the direction I'd been hit. It didn't hurt at all. I don't think that anyone has scolded you, Keichi-kun, so I'll scold you in their place, okay? I pressed a hand on my cheek, now warm with embarrassment, and quietly stared down at Rena's feet. Going somewhere you're not allowed to go was a very bad thing to do. Do you understand that? Uh-huh. Answer me with a yes, Keichi-kun. Yes. Also, what's even worse, you didn't admit to having done something so bad. You should never do anything bad in the first place, but... Not admitting to it or apologizing for it is much, much worse. Yes, I, I was wrong. For a few moments, Rena stared at me silently and intently as if gauging my remorse. Then finally, the tension in her face softened and she smiled. Okay then, it's about time. I should be going. All right. Be sure to give the notice to your mom, okay? Also, warn her not to go out to pass it on after it gets dark. I bent down to pick up the notice, which I dropped when she slapped me. The pages had come out of their clasp and were now making a mess on the floor. I gathered them up one by one. My hand stopped at a single more lighthearted page with peaceful sentences dancing on it. We still have plenty of homemade soy sauce in stock. Feel free to come to the Sonozaki house if you want some. What? 
What? What is this? I picked up the page and scanned the rest of it. They were stockpiling high-quality soy sauce they got from faraway relatives in the Akita Prefecture? They'd gotten a big shipment recently. They couldn't use it. Also, they wanted anyone who wanted some of it to feel free to come over, is what it said. It's P.S. It said it arrived in barrels, and to please bring a two-liter bottle or other container for it. That's how it tied it together. If you need some soy sauce, then you would go to the Sonozaki house. Rena, did you... Did you know all along? Yeah, I knew. Rena had already been suspicious of Mion. As soon as she noticed the big bottle of soy sauce was missing, Mikachan had taken the bottle and gone to Mion's house and... There she was erased. Mikachan wasn't coming back, so Sadako called Mion's house and she knew where she had gone and then... Sadako got called there as well. The meeting all the day, the mayor disappeared. Didn't Hoishi-san say the three families participated in it? The three families would include the Sonozaki family. Did he also say that the current leader was really old? And her heir, Mion, frequently stood in for her at public appearances. While the mayor was returning from the shrine, Mion called out and stopped him. She talked to him and invited him to their house, and... Then... She made him disappear. It was probably even simpler to make Shion disappear. She was a part of the Sonozaki family, after all. They... They knew exactly what she was doing at all times. I'm sure they even knew her part-time job schedule, too. Thinking back, wasn't that Angel Mort store managed by the Sotozaki family? Setting up an ambush for her there wouldn't have been any trouble at all. I'm I'm going to go to Mio and I'll apologize. I'm gonna have her put an end to everything. She won't forgive me easily, but I'll go and ask her not to sacrifice anyone else. But that decided there was no need for me to be lazing around here. I put on my shoes and slipped past Rena to exit the house. When she stopped me. I'm going to. Rena, shouldn't you go to school? What about the children? This is way more important than school. Yeah, you're right. Screw those kids. Rena, you shouldn't come. If you get wrapped up in this too, then I think I might actually go crazy. Rena didn't move her arm, which is blocking my way. If Keiichi Kun disappeared as well, then I think I might actually go crazy too. It's happened before. This is a realistic risk. Oh, okay. So I won't let you go alone. Rena argued boldly as tears welled up in her eyes. Is that what Rena is all about in Chapter 1? She's just afraid of Keiichi leaving her? She's seen people leave her life before and she doesn't want like the n another close friend she's made to suddenly drop out of it again. You're not going to transfer out, will you? Literally transfer out. <laughs> it doesn't work with my Rena is uh, Satoshi theory, but that does kind of match up with... She really is just incredibly lonely not lonely but like she's she has a hard time give like seeing her friends uh friends she makes constantly go in and out of her life and she's like i can't i can't deal with that yep especially having had to you know uproot her whole life as a younger child move out of hinamizawa yep and then move back right and presumably have something strange happen at her yeah. Old school. But. Interesting. I saw them and I knew the strength of her resolve. All right. Let's go. Thank you, Rena. Rena nodded slightly but firmly and finally let down the arm blocking me. Let's go to Mion's house. I'll apologize for the crimes I've committed. And then we'll put an end to these twisted days. And after that, I'll pray that once more we can return to those fun, lively days. With Rena following me, I left the house. In front of the house, there was a car waiting. It was Oishi-san. Well, hey, good morning there. May Barasan. To you too, Ryugu-san. Together so early in the morning, you make me jealous. <laughs> what a truly praiseworthy man he was. If he had been lying in wait so early in the morning just to pressure me into talking. On well, this morning, though, maybe this was actually a good opportunity. You're from the police. Oh, have I not introduced myself to you, Ryugu-san? Please, excuse my rudeness. My name is Oishi from the Okinomiya Police Department. Pleased to meet you. Are we telling Oishi-san? Yeah, I think my palm is enough punishment for your crime, Keiichi-kun, but we should leave Michan's to these people. 
pain and sadness, and looked down as those emotions built up in my heart. We have something to tell you, Oishi-san. Well now, what about? Should we stand here and talk, or go inside the car? Weird that he was out there when Rena got here. Like, let's not gloss over that. Rena. Rena? And she's all like, we should tell the cops? Did did they get to her? What is happening here? This is... I don't know. This is not making a ton of... Because Oishi would have had to have been there when Rena walked up, but they didn't hear the car arrive or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So... Rena did all that, then brought Keiichi out, and now he's all prepped to go and emit stuff. And uh, hey, look, the cops right there, waiting for them to. Oh, Rena. Should we stand here and talk, or go inside the car? In the car, please. And I continued to look down weakly. All I could do was be thankful for how dependable Rena was. At Rena's urging, I revealed everything to Oishi-san. The latter, while making sure to throw in murmurs that he was paying attention every now and then, took notes. We continued that way for a while. Well, how do you feel? Don't you feel a lot better now that you told me? Oishi-san asked this while scratching his head with his ballpoint pen. Of course I don't feel better. The place that I've been paid up until now for me not owning up to my crimes have been so immense. But as long as that payment wasn't returned, the load on my chest would never be removed. His radio started to emit static. This is Kumagai. Oishi-san, over. Yes, hello. This is Oishi. We got news a few minutes ago that she's been absent from school. No movement at the Sonazaki house. Our target is still on the premises. Yes, that's good. Keep a close watch out now. Roger that. The relief for 3 and 7 just arrived, and they've returned to base. Also, it looks like the division chief is looking for you, Oishi-san. He keeps bugging me, too, to tell him as soon as I get in touch with you. What do you want me to do? <laughs> if you're hard-pressed for an answer, tell him you're actually under orders not to wake me from my morning nap. Got it. Z- the, radio- the radio grew silent. Well, I'm sorry about that. That was just about work. He just said there was no movement at the Sotozaki house, didn't he? <laughs> oh, my. Did it sound like that to you? This, uh, this won't do at all. Please. Please be keeping that a secret now, all right? I don't have permission from the division chief to be making private inquiries like this. Oishi-san had suspected Mion for a long time. Oishi suspects Mion and the Sonozaki family of, like, a smuggling ring of some kind. Uh, he, like, he's looking for guns. He's looking for contraband. Mm-hmm. I don't know that he actually is interested in the curse killings. <laughs> I don't know that that's what his little his little vigilante force is interested in solving. It sounds like they're looking for like just to, to like uncover an illegal operation of a yakuza gang, not solve a serial a s- series of killings. Am I reading that wrong? I don't know it seemed like seemed like he thought that perhaps the Sonozakis were responsible for the series of killings yeah but that's not he, what he was trying to find or what he was hoping to find remember he was looking for like you know like a poppy operation or guns or something yeah he seemed to think that probably if somebody's killed someone if a yakuza operation has killed someone they did it for some reason it doesn't seem too far out there i guess <laughs> no for question witnesses or searching houses we uh we ain't got permission for nothing, really. The Sonozaka House's defense is said to protect the family members are also in full working condition. Without a warrant, we can't do nothing about nothing. Unless the crime happens right in front of us. <laughs> oh, Ishi-san, could you be... Oh, that's Rena. Oh, Ishi-san, could you be... Using me as bait again, right? <laughs> Rena's tone of voice alone was enough to make her spite clear as she stared at Oishi-san. You can't set foot in the Sonozaki house. Were you trying to get Keiichi-kun to go in there instead? Rena, that... Oh, Rena, that's... What do you mean? This person, just as I thought, he plays really dirty. Ah, so he did get to Rena. Somehow. Well, stop. You're hurting my reputation now. That said, I am all ears to your explanation, all right? Oishi-san lit a cigarette and responded to Rena, wearing an expression implying he was calm and willing to let her comments slide. 
You can't get a warrant, but you've always had your eyes on me, Chan, because you thought she was suspicious. Okay, yeah? You plotted to incite Keiichi Kun and have him go to the Sonozaki house. Then, if something were to happen to him, you would have used that as an excuse to go in. Isn't that right? I only understood about half of what Rena was saying. I knew, however, that Oishi-san had been trying to use me. Even if Keiichi Kun got hurt as a result, have you no shame? Is this how the police do things? Well, my, my. It seems we have an incredible detective on our hands. Oh, my, oh, my. Would you be interested in taking our exam? I will gladly write a recommendation letter to get you into the detective division. <laughs> Is that Excuse me, I am a food detective. Food detective, Rena. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Is this, this was like yesterday. <laughs> How do you not remember this, Keiichi? Food detective, Rena. I, I cracked the case. You, you, that's right, you did crack the case. That With is soy absolute. sauce. <laughs> With soy sauce. Is that, so is that why she's so concerned about... Because she knows what Oishi is like? Oishi has tried to approach her before. And she's like, oh god, I know what he's gonna... She Oishi tried to approach Rena first to get to Mion. Mm -hmm. Rena rebuffed him. And then once he starts going after Keiji, she's like, oh no, I realize what, she's go I realize what he's gonna do to him. We gotta get him away from him. And Keiji doesn't... Oh no! How does this line up with... Um Oishi from last chapter. Perfectly. He was still using Keiichi as bait. Keiichi even said he was being used as bait. Absolutely, but not to get at the Sonozakis. He was suspicious of Rena then. Now he seems to have no problem with Rena. He seems to be suspicious of Mion. I don't know that he w wasn't that he was suspicious. Well, it wasn't that he wasn't... I don't know that it was that he was suspicious of Rena or more that he tried to approach Rena and Rena rebuffed him and he was like, maybe she's working with Mion or maybe... She she said something to Mion, and Mion got up in his face about it. So she's like, oh, okay, I guess she's working on Mion's side now. I better try to get some dirt on her. Hmm. Hmm. God, there's so many moving parts to this. It's making my head hurt. You're despicable. Rena spoke quietly, her words dripping with hostility. I've been insulted in all kinds of ways in my life, but one or two words from a young girl is always the roughest for me. Even so, I suppose I should thank you for not arresting me, Chan, yet. Well, don't mention it, young lady. Oishi-san seemed to be enjoying his exchange with Rena. The things this man thought were like a swamp. I could barely see past the surface. Reminded me again of how much I disliked him. Now then, as two esteemed friends of me on Sonozaki, Sam, what do you plan on doing right now? Will you wait kindly for me to go over the evidence and request a warrant? No, he won't. Oh, this is Rena. Because uh, Keiichi doesn't call her mean Michan. Okay. No, we won't wait for that. We'll go and make Michan surrender herself. That's right. If she turned herself in rather than be arrested, she might get a lighter sentence. At this point, perhaps that was the only pity I could find in me to afford her. I see, I see. <laughs> I wonder if it'll go that well. If you're careless, you two may face danger yourselves, you know. Oishisa was measuring our resolve. So when a strong voice had declared, We're fully prepared! Oishi-san gave us an unpleasant yet seemingly satisfied grin. It was then that I realized this man was trying to use us for his own convenience. If anything should happen to us, use that as an excuse. Though my greatest hope is that you'll surround the place so that the criminal can't get away. Ha ha ha. Oh, that's, that was Rena. Ah, so. oh, well. Ah, oh, well. <laughs> Ryugu-san, you're good at negotiating, too. I'm throwing in the towel. I surrender. What are you talking about? If the policemen surround Michan's house, then that will be insurance for the worst case scenario. For the worst case. Plus it would be another way of pressuring Mion to give herself up, wouldn't it? Yeah, oh Ishi to Kuma Chan. Oh Ishi to Kuma Chan. This is Kuma guy, go ahead. Our two friends are gonna play at the Sonozaki house. Make arrangements so that we can reinforce them if needed. Roger. They're, they're all together too short conversation, implied that our questioning was already a part of their plans. Then let's get going. Would you like to buy some tea biscuits on the way there? Neither Rena nor I went along with Oishi-san's stupid joke. What on earth? So... <laughs> this is so different than what I was expecting. Oh my gosh. 
<laughs> I'm all about it, but like, I I feel I I feel I felt like I at least had something of a foothold after chapter one, and I feel like all of that work I did to try to like claw any sort of understanding out of it has absolutely just evaporated. Not all of it. <laughs> I, I I have like so much that I I couldn't like. Man, this is so strange. Luigi stopped the car at the place where we always waited for Mion. Come to think of it, I've never been to her house before. I've only heard that it's right down this road. Well, this is as far as I can take you. According to our information, there are quite a few security cameras set up on the premises. Well, still don't worry, I got a bunch of youngsters ready and waiting to slip past them and go in. We'll be monitoring inside with a one-way mic, so... If you two give us a loud scream, we'll know right away. We'll persuade her for sure, so please be ready for her to turn herself in. In both our eyes was determination. It was the only method available to us for lightening the sins of our good friend. Be plenty careful now, you hear? You probably don't believe it right now, but I don't want you two being sacrificed, if at all possible. <laughs> You're right about that. With that rude response, we left the car. The clinging humidity and voices of the cicadas greeted us. I'd never have experienced this. <laughs> I'd never have expected this would be happening today. Let's go, Keichi-kun. Rana took the lead and began to walk down the road I'd never been. You've been to Mion's house before, right? Yeah, a few times. It's a really big house. You could fit a mountain into their backyard, too. You can pick mushrooms and stuff, though there are fences everywhere. Big enough to fit a mountain. That was amazing. One of the three families controlling Hinomizawa, and the head family of the Sonozaki clan. Perhaps there was something to be said about its magnitude. The path continued onward, level and uneventful. There were metal fences along its edges, and beyond them were woods with trees going thickly. The fences were high. The tops of them bent inward, sticking out like sharp spears, plus there was dangerous-looking barbed wire wrapping around them. No one could look at them and not feel intimidated. In addition, there were signboards hung up here and there along the fence. Private property of the Sonozaki family, entrance forbidden. Beware of venomous snakes. Active security cameras. Intruders will be charged an entry fee of one million yen. <laughs> Okay, so there's no way you accidentally go on their property, then. Yep. This forest, or should I say this mountain? Is it all their yard? It's more like their domain. As you can see, it's private property, but nobody maintains it. The forest isn't really the kind that you can go hiking in. She could say that again. It really did feel like a neglected savage woodland. It was dark and damp, and certainly not a forest that made you want to go for a nice walk. Maybe that's just what happens when a landowner has too much land. Like Oishi-san said, there were security cameras hung up all over the place, though they had been weathered by wind and rain, casting doubt as to whether they were even functional. I wonder if she's watching us as we come to her. I don't think she is. The only people living in Michan's house are generally her and her grandma, after all. There's nobody to watch the cameras. What a useless security system. Why would you even think about that already? What? Never mind. <laughs> Well, Michan's father seems like a pretty tough person to get along with, so whenever everyone in the family is getting together, the cameras are apparently working properly. Ah, uh, <laughs> interesting. Okay, that's right. Mion's father, he was a big shot Yakuza, wasn't he? Rena smoothly danced around the answer as she explained. At last, a huge gate as big as I imagined appeared. Is she living by herself with her grandmother in a house with such a grand gateway? I wonder if she's in here. Beep! The old buzzer made a dull sound. Was it cut off in the middle and not getting to the house? We waited long enough without a response for me to start thinking like that. However, we finally heard footsteps walking through gravel on the other side of the gate. I nervously balled my hands, palms now sweating into fists. It was the clang of a bolt being released and the gate opened slightly. The person peeking out of the gap was none other than Mion. Well, this is unusual. Aren't you two going to school? Mion didn't seem all that surprised at visitors arriving in the morning, which wasn't a normal time. In fact, she almost seemed relaxed as if she knew we were coming beforehand. We stayed home today. Hmm. Keichan is one thing, but you two, Rena, you two are such troublemakers. 
Mion smiled lightly, in the way that the Mion we knew always did. Well, let's not just stand here. Come on in. She gestured for us to follow her. I hesitated for a moment, looking at Rena. Let's go. Rena smiled cheerfully, as if she were passing through the gate of a good friend's house, and then did just that. I rallied myself and then go through the gate as well. On the other side, it hadn't been maintained very well, but it was clear that the, the lot was magnificently wide. It wasn't quite what you'd think of when you hear mansion, but it was very clearly a vast place. Was this the first time you've been here, Kei-chan? Oh, uh, yeah, this house is enormous. Steep thatched roofs aren't in fashion anymore. This place could be a tourist attraction. I want to rebuild it using totally average and boring reinforced concrete soon. <laughs> Mion dryly smiled as she said that, then closed the gate and relocked the heavy bolt. Don't worry about it. Things have been dangerous lately. Gotta do at least this much during the daytime. Yeah, you're right about that. Maybe it was my imagination, but I thought I saw a hint of a shadow in her smile. Well then, good sir and madam, I shall show you inside. Please, come this way. Mion bowed to us like a worker at a high-class hotel, then pivoted on her heel and began to walk. Rena gripped my stiffening arm lightly. Keiichi-kun, you're too tense. We came to see Michan, remember? You don't need to be that nervous. That's right. When I get nervous, I tend to let everything show on my face. <laughs> I'll stop tensing up. Even if something were to happen, there were two of us. Oishi-san's subordinates were waiting outside the gate for us, too. There was nothing to worry about. After thinking about it that much, I realized my nervousness was already gone, and laughed at myself. What's this? Mion, what's with this stone on top of the newspapers? It's in the way. There was a pile of newspapers on the floor of the entrance, and there was a large rock on top of them. I didn't understand why something like that was here. Rena noticed me looking at it questioningly and giggled. Rena, do you know? What is this? Some kind of good luck charm? <laughs> If you don't really know, then feel free to move it out of the way and put your shoes there. <laughs> what? Big stack of newspapers with a rock on top of it. Is it just like a stain? or? Keiichi-kun, oh. there's a nest of swallows right above that stone. Huh? Oh, you're right. This house is for people, but swallows still come in without permission and make nests. It must be like a tradition for them. Whenever spring comes, they always make a nest here. It's kind of annoying, though. In other words, it's a sign to not take your shoes off here, because swallow poop could end up in them. I couldn't help but laugh at the silly contrivance. My laughter naturally spread to the other two. <laughs> a really long time ago, the Sonozaki family apparently cultivated silkworms. Our ancestors would get all worked up over exterminating the swallows. When you think of it that way, maybe this is our just desserts. <laughs> Anyway, come on in. The inside of the house wasn't very bright at all. It was dimly lit, in fact, but mysteriously I could still feel an elegance to the place. Mion seemed to want a more modern building, but traditional houses like this aren't bad either. You're kidding, right? There's a terrible draft and the winters are freezing. Don't go making my house into property of cultural significance and getting in the way of renovations, got it? What I want most is a house like yours, Keichan. I'm pretty jealous of it. It seems like it would be warm in the winter. Oh, but Snowfall seems like it would be a problem. What part of it do you want? The murder house part of it or the regular <laughs> house part of it? Snowfall's a problem? Does Hinamizawa get that much snow? Our latitude's north of Kanto, isn't it? Isn't this region warm? <laughs> you don't know, Keichi-kun? Hinamizawa is in an area that gets heavy snowfalls. When we get a lot, everyone gets buried. Sometimes you can't even get out of your house. Sometimes your car gets totally buried, too, and you can't find where it is. Uh, I wasn't aware of that. Himizawa was a bad place in the winter? I'm gonna think of it, my dad said something like, this place got plenty of snow, so we sh could have fun building igloos. Still, like your front door getting buried, not being able to find your car. That's way too much snow. And we haven't had a winter like that in forever. Yeah. <laughs> you remember from geography class, right? The western side of Japan gets cold winds from Asia. We're different from those softies protected by the mountains, nice and warm by the Pacific Ocean. I am totally okay with being a softie, nice and warm, thank you. I hate the cold. <laughs> we'll have to have a training camp to get Keichan used to the cold this winter then. No way, no way, no way! There's no way that's happening! I hate the cold and I hate training camps too and I hate them even more put together. 
Mio laughed more uproariously than she ever had, then told us she'd bring out some tea and left her seat for the moment. Still, there's a lot of fun things to do in the winter. I bet our club will be a blast then. A club continuing activities through the winter sounds totally horrible. Like swimming in the cold or marching in the snow. When did we turn into Melt Redhorn? Yeah, there are definitely a lot of tough punishment games for the winter season. One time she made us have a Rio carnival in the schoolyard while snow was falling. I see the terror of our club cared not for the season. The victor would be decided by who could best adapt to the winter-only events. We do snowball fights and shaved ice eating contests and treasure hunts in the snow. Wait, why is everything outside? Why can't we play tabletop games in a nice warm room while it's snowing? Whoa, okay, Chikun. If you're saying things like that, then you're going to lose a lot this winter. We'll have lots of punishment games and Rena won't lose. <laughs> Don't give me that hell. I sort of things with a cross jump to the head. What Joe? <laughs> You're sure having fun. Our walls aren't very thick, so be careful not to go flying through any, okay? The paper sliding door opened, and Mion returned with a pot and complete tea set. Do you want some sesame senbei to go with that? Sorry we don't have much in the way of bean paste or other good stuff. <laughs> oh, that sounds delicious right now. It's alright. I'm trying to remember, do I have sesame senbei in the mail? We got, we got rice senbei. And oh, really? we've been eating it. Yeah, that's what that's what you've been snacking on. The round oh, ones. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The tasty ones. Sorry, we didn't really come to drink tea anyway. Those words the smile disappeared from Rena's face. Ah, uh, she did it. That one careless statement reminded us of what we had nearly been able to forget. I wanted to enjoy this peaceful time a little longer, but we put an end to that with those honestly careless words. When she noticed the smile disappear from Rena's expression, Mion too changed hers. It was as if the cheerful air that was like a warm spring day until a moment ago and slipped through the cracks in the paper door, and altogether disappeared. There's no point in regretting it now. We did not come here today to chat and enjoy ourselves. Mion silently poured the tea. During that time, both Rena and I sat kneeling without uttering a word. <laughs> Mion with her assassin's teapot. <laughs> <laughs> Keiichi, look at her hands. How is she holding it? <laughs> is there a hole in the, uh, the... It's in the handle. Here you are, drink up. We couldn't even mutter a word of acknowledgement at those natural words of courtesy. There's no poison in it or anything. Do you just trust me that much? That's upsetting. Mion gave a bitter smile at that and let her shoulders droop. Uh. <sighs> Ugh. We all remained silent. We remained silent hoping that someone else would speak up first. That was, however, the only one thing we didn't want to do, and so we sat for a long time. At last, Mion scornfully and... Mion smiled scornfully and opened her mouth to speak. Hey now, Keichan, Rena, you're the guests. Didn't you come here for something? If you don't speak up first, this old man won't know what to do. Rena and I exchanged glances, and we both resigned ourselves. Rena opened her mouth to speak first, so I stopped her. Keichikun. It's all right. I needed to come here. Let me talk first. Okay, I understand. What would Keichan have to tell me? Please give me your daughter's hand in marriage, maybe? <laughs> Can't do that. My little Rena and Keichan aren't meant for each other. Go wash your face with miso soup and try again later. <laughs> what do you mean we're not meant for each other? We have surprisingly good chemistry? <laughs> Afterwards, I thought her mean remarks were Mion's own way of showing consideration. Mion had said those mean things in a totally normal voice and it drained the tension from my shoulders. Mion first. I have something to apologize for. You do? What for? Mion pretended that she didn't know what I was talking about, but I clearly got my point across. The night of the Watanagashi, the ritual storehouse behind the shrine, I went in there. <sighs> I could see Mion's expression immediately become harder. I knew it was somewhere I wasn't supposed to go, but it was just supposed to be a little exploration. We didn't mean anything by it, but even so I shouldn't have done it. So I would like to apologize. I am sorry. To display my deepest sincerity, I pressed my forehead to the table. I'd meant it as a way of prostrating myself. Figured it wouldn't feel sincere enough if I raised my head right away, so I left it there on the table for a while. Mion didn't say anything. My face down, I couldn't tell what sort of expression she had. Only the voices of the cicadas filled the room. Mixed with them, I could hear the sound of the clock ticking. And that was all. When I started to struggle to breathe from having my head down for so long, she told me to stop. You got me there. I didn't expect you to pitch it to me straight. You've got me on the ropes. 
I looked up to see that Mion's face was calm, but she was smiling faintly. If you understand that even though it was only a casual exploration for you, Kei-chan, that there are a lot of people who think it's no laughing matter, then it's okay. There's an old saying. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. It's been days since then. It may be too late, but I do apologize. What I did was wrong. Please forgive me. I could feel pitiful tears welling up within me. If I had done this sooner, maybe nothing terrible would have happened. It's okay. If you know what you did was bad, then that's enough, right? Mion spoke like it was someone else's problem, and I wasn't happy about it. Mi-chan, Keiichi-kun is apologizing seriously. I think maybe you should respond seriously as well. As well. I am being serious, though. Do I not look serious to you, Rena? You don't. Rena was giving her tit for tat, and so the room's atmosphere quickly began to grow sharper. She was right. Even though I came here to speak from the heart like this, it felt like she hadn't been taking this seriously. Probably because that's not what she expected you to say you found in there? I don't know. Obviously, Reno isn't fond of that. Okay, Chikun, you can get up now. Let's tell her everything. It looks like what Michan wants, too. Oh, that, that looks like what Michan wants, too. Ugh, if I had known, it would turn out like this from the beginning. Didn't I come here prepared for that? I mustered my willpower and bit my lip. Mion? You called Rikachan and Sadako the day before last, right? I don't remember doing so. If you have a reason to think so, could you let me hear it? It was evening before dinner time. Rikachan should have come here, bringing a big bottle of soy sauce to have you share some with her. Mion was trying to keep from showing any reaction, but I didn't miss her eyelid twitching just a little bit. Why do you think that? It's not hard to understand. Mi-chan, you saw it too, didn't you? Rika-chan's room. Mion put a finger to her forehead and acted like she was thinking. There was... Chilled tofu, but no... Oh, this is Rana explaining There was it. chilled tofu, but no soy sauce. Plus, the big bottle of soy sauce that should have been under the sink was nowhere to be found. <laughs> what? Is that why she would have come here? Mio dropped the act. You wrote it yourself on the notice, didn't you? That you'd share your soy sauce? Mio scratched her head. I heard her ever so faintly click her tongue. It was as though we found out she'd purposely given too little change to a servant. That's all I could feel from her. Then Mi-chan, you... Rika-chan, you... Er, you hid her? Rena hesitated for a moment. I could tell she didn't want to use the word erased and was struggling to find another word. That was really supposed to be the end, wasn't it? For you, anyway. What are you talking about? You didn't foresee that Rika-chan would tell Saroko-chan that she was going to your house, did you, Mi-chan? <sighs> then Saroko-chan called. Might Rika be imposing on you? Yeah, probably just like that. <laughs> you sound just like her. Yeah, I couldn't even tell the difference. Mi-chan, you were in a bit of a bind then, because someone knew that Rika-chan had come here. So you decided to lure Saroko-chan here too. <laughs> lure her out? Hmm, like how, I wonder. Mion prodded Rena on as if trying to get to the good part of the interesting story. I, whoever knew, had been watching Mion change the whole time. She was restlessly twirling her fingers. She clearly lost her calm. Of course, it wasn't really a slight thing, and only I, who had been watching her this whole time, would have known. Mion was panicking. What Rena was saying must have been a bullseye. It probably went like this. Saruko, I actually made too much dinner today, so why not come over and eat? Rika-chan came earlier and already ate some. Something like that. Scratch. Mion's nails dug into her knee. <laughs> There's no recordings of the phone conversations or anything, so how do you know that much? I know it because the dinner that Saroko-chan made for the two of them was plastic-wrapped in their refrigerator and hadn't been touched. For a few moments, Mion's face was frozen in utter amazement. She looked like she couldn't believe that this person in front of her was Rena. With just that to go on, how did you even guess what we said over the phone? 
Yeah, it's a long explanation, so I'll get to the point. The contents of that refrigerator provided a vivid account of what you said over the phone when you lured her out. Mion's jaw remained on the floor. That was the only way I could describe her face. That's... <laughs> I had no idea I had such an incredible detective right next to me the whole time. I can't believe you'd figure out everything down to the phone conversation. Just from what was inside the fridge. <laughs> You've got me there. You got me. You've got me. <laughs> as if a dam had burst, Mion convulsed into laughter. Her laughter, though, definitely didn't make us want to laugh as well. <laughs> Mion grew tired of her dumb laughter, heaved a big sigh, and scratched her head. It almost seemed like Mion had lost a detective punishment game for the club or something, and her punishment had been decided. Oh, how fun that would have been if it were true. An incredible detective. Mi-chan, you're the one who guessed what Oishi-san told us. He called me an incredible detective, too. You're the one who guessed what Oishi-san told us? Oh, why'd you admit that? It's the first time that she admitted that the police sent them and that she told the police all of this. Rena, you were so good. Uh, yep, immediate reaction. As soon as she heard Oishi-san's name, Mion's eyes began to display panic more clearly. So anyone would be able to tell. Mion, the... Oh. The police have suspected you for a long time now. Oishi-san's officers have had the house under observation so they could break in at any time. Mion attempted to feign calm, but it looked like she was having a hard time with that. Part of her couldn't believe that the police had her surrounded, and she closely examined Rena's facial expression. However, she couldn't detect a hint of falsehood. Finally, Mion seemed to accept the fact that the police were encircling the house. Was the mayor Michan too? Were Tomotake-san and Takano-san you as well? Mion didn't answer our rapid-fire questions. I could clearly see impatience in her eyes, which were, st which were still fading calm. At last, Mion, who had been sitting there lazily, readjusted her cushion and sat herself upright. We've never seen that expression on Mion before. <laughs> that sprite right there. I don't know if this is meant to be, like, the indicator that this is Shion and not Mion, but we've never seen that particular soft <laughs> smile on Mion. We have only ever seen that particular soft smile on Shion. <laughs> Face detective. At that moment, the atmosphere in the room changed completely. Mion's expression also changed. The patience and wonderment in her expression disappeared, and she became so solemn you would think she was about to conduct a tea ceremony. I could sense it. It was now in this moment Mion had ceased to be Mion, but had changed into Mion Sonozaki, the current heir to the Sonozaki house. That solemn atmosphere about her was clearly abnormal, and was entirely different from what that of the Mion I knew. Now I could believe it. Now I could believe that she was the young leader who commanded the entire Sonozaki clan. Mion quietly placed both her hands on the tatami mat, and gave a beautifully elegant bow, as if this really were a tea ceremony, and named herself. We meet for the first time. I am the current heir to the Sonozaki house. My name is Mion. Mion's movements were so elegant they could cut, and we couldn't even answer her. All Rena and I could do was watch, baffled at her actions, which we could never imagine the normal her doing. I would like to welcome you to the Sonozaki main house today. I will greet you all in place of our leader, Oryo. It seems as though you have various things you would like to ask. If I can be of any assistance, then I would like to answer, without concealing anything. What? What did Mion just say? She said she would answer anything we asked. There's a strong light of resolve in her eyes. It's really all right if we ask anything, then? I shall tell you everything I know. That is why you have come here, after all. Renner and I exchanged glances. There was a mountain of things we wanted to ask Mion. However, we hesitated for a moment on what we should ask first. The first question Renner gave was extremely abstract. But it was the question everyone wanted to know right now. Why would you do this? That was what I wanted to ask as well. Why would you do this? Do they have different understandings of what this is at the moment? That didn't only go for Rika-chan and Sadako. It went for the mayor, Takano-san, Tomotake-san as well. Even further back, for all the incidents that have been occurring every year. For a while, Mion couldn't respond. Right when we realized that the question was too vague and tried to put it into more concrete terms, she finally opened her mouth to speak. 
to answer that question will take some time. If that is acceptable, however, then I would by all means like you to hear it. She spoke clearly. She spoke with a clarity that a grandmother might use when telling a story from long ago. Do you know that Hinamizawa Village used to be called Onigafuchi Village? Rena nodded lightly, then shot me a glance asking me if I did. I returned her nod. Hinamizawa was once called Onigafuchi Village. Yes, I had heard all about that. That night from Takano-san at the ritual storehouse. They firmly believed that demon blood ran through their veins and cut off all contact with the outside world. They were worshipped by those in the villages at the foot of the mountains and treated like transcendents, those capable of magic. That's right. Our ancestors in Onigafuchi village were proud tan- transcendents descended from the demons. Those in the villages at the foot of the mountains worshipped and honored them. Nevertheless, that all decayed with the end of the Tokugawa era. The black ships arrived, the era of the samurai ended, the era of national isolation ended, and the tradition of worshipping Onigafuchi village quickly disappeared. Those things that linger from the past were all to be detested. That was the kind of era it became. The Meiji era began, and the name of Onigafuchi village, with its long history, was forcibly changed to Hinamizawa village. I have heard the Meiji government strongly wished to erase the old customs. The abolition of feudal domains and the establishment of prefectures. An era had begun seeing Japan sprinting up the stairs that were beyond their means to try and reach the same level of the rest of the world. All things in the Western style were to be extolled, while all old traditional things were to be scorned. That was the sort of era it was. Our ancestors in Onigafuchi village were proud transcendents descended from the demons. Onigafuchi village disappeared in a flash. At last, Japan, provoked by the great European powers, colonizing countries in Asia one by one, began a policy to increase its wealth and military power, so that it could stand as a global power in its own right. Conscription began, and they won war after war. The First Sino-Japanese War, and the Russo-Japanese War, and until the Pacific War broke out, they recklessly tri- climbed the staircase towards modernization. At the time, Onigafuchi Village had already lost its impenetrability. The villagers, once worshipped as transcendents, were now on the receiving end of inhuman treatment. The sacred Onigafuchi Village had gro- been groundlessly labeled an isolated village of those afflicted with incurable diseases, a mere shadow of its former self, and stood on the precipice of an era of hardship. Thus began harsh days where one would suffer unreasonable discrimination just because people knew one was from Onigafuchi. The children in the village at the foot of the mountain were taught not to go near Hinamizawa because filthy germs were rampant there. Children who had come into contact with children in Hinamizawa would cry and wail as their parents purified the spot they were touched by rubbing salt on it. One of the adults said to the children that if you got lost in Hinamizawa, You would be kidnapped by demons, cut up into pieces, and devoured. Never, ever go near the terrifying village of the man-eating demons. That's what he taught them. Another said that during a famine long ago, the people of Hinamizawa gathered up all the corpses they discarded into the dry riverbeds, then cooked and ate them in order to survive. Groundless stories, but said in such seriousness. Baseless slander added to baseless slander, making Onigafuchi Village's historically accurate, thrilling history all the more believable. Perhaps the chain of undue discrimination was a manifestation of the people's anxiety toward the uncertain times. Of course, the story didn't end only with the perspective of children. If anyone found out you were from Onigafuchi, you would be turned down from any job you applied for. People would even go back on engagements and marriage proposals. As for the marriages where one partner had lied about it, As soon as the truth got out, they were made to divorce. It even caused trials. They would appeal that where one came from wasn't an important enough reason to divorce. They would, however, lose their case. Lying about one's birthplace apparently constitutes a heavy act of misrepresentation in marriage. That's terrible. I'd heard about such discrimination towards those in small villages in civics class. Just because others knew you were from a tiny hamlet... You'd be subjected to every societal disadvantage there was, a modern form of bullying. Though I only memorized that because it was going to be on a test one time. 
I recalled being suspicious about it and unable to believe such discrimination occurred in modern Japan. Well, I suppose I can't say that they weren't asking for it. Our ancestors were proud of the demon blood flowing through them. They lived their lives boasting about it and scorning those at the foot of the mountain, after all. They struck fear into the villagers down there with their mystique and demanded gifts of dread and tribute. Tribute? Tribute? Tribute! And with that, Mion smiled for the first time, albeit in self-mockery. During the Pacific War, despite the slogans that all the country was acting as one, those from Hinamizawa continued to suffer all manner of discrimination. There were too many ways to count. They would send their husbands and sons to war, and the women on the home front would suffer greatly too. My grandmother remembers it well. She remembers it being a difficult time. Even that bitterly long war, however, finally ended in 1945. Hinamizawa had lost many male hands, but at last their fathers and husbands and sons returned to them. Of course, there were also many who didn't come back. Nevertheless, for those in Hinamizawa who were at their limits, barely able to maintain the village without the men, their return was a very happy thing. MacArthur's GHQ set to work on drastically improving mindsets and strove for the abolition of unfair discrimination. They could feel day breaking on the dismal night that was the previous era. Hinamizawa was on the verge of turning into a ghost town. Those in the village started to say that they should rebuild it once again, and got to work trying to make the village even a little more plentiful. During that time, someone appeared who built up a fortune through a vast number of dealings in the black market. That was Mion's grandfather, the husband of the elderly current family leader, Sohei Sonozaki. Okay, so that that's um, Oreo's husband. Yep. yep. Sohei said that he managed food warehouses in Harbin after being dispatched to the Chinese mainland. When it was time to pull out, he conspired with his superiors and comrades and stole a great deal of the army's canned goods. He hid them somewhere in the Seto Inland Sea and so sold them widely at a high price on the black market, thus earning a fortune. Sohei didn't spend that fortune for his own pleasure, either. He entrusted the entire amount to his wife, the head of the Sonozaki house. Let's revive this ruined village. All who live here are our family, and this fortune is our correct collective property. So he proclaimed to my grandmother, the current head of the family. That vast fortune was a huge reason why Hinamizawa was revitalized after the war. I see. With that, Hinamizawa came back to life. And that's how the Sonozaki family had established its current prosperity. Of course, there were many people who begrudged the money coming from the black market, but the villagers no longer minded it. They succeeded at one business venture after another. Those who had succeeded freely supported those who followed them. The giant family of Hinamisawa, tied together with strong bonds, kept on expanding its influence. The Sonozaki family, the center of everything, would be extolled for a long time as the minds behind Hinamizawa's revitalization. The person at the middle of it all was your Nana, Michan. That's amazing. What a great success. Mion looked like she was honestly that happy that Rena had praised her. However, Around 1955, the wind started blowing in the other direction again, because of the canned flesh incident. Ooh, finally we're hearing about this. Canned flesh? It sounded so hideous that just hearing it made me nauseous. Someone naming himself as my grandfather Sohei Sonozaki's superior confessed that those canned goods had been human flesh. Hinamisawa, a village in which demons lived and ate humans, they were just about to wipe away that cursed stigma. The light they had finally started to see in their peaceful lives grew hazy and disappeared. The shocking truth as revealed by his former superior, the stolen provisions from the old Japanese army that had been a huge cornerstone for Hinamizawa's revival, had been canned human flesh. Why were there cans like that? Wasn't Sohei just the manager of food warehouses? His superior revealed that Sohei Sonozaki did not have the job of managing the food. In reality, Sohei's job during the war had been to exterminate pestilent, pestilent mice and to transport the corpses of those with infectious diseases. It had been unfair treatment, and all because of the lowliness of his origins. As a result, though, he had returned safely without having been sent to the front lines or being detained. 
Perhaps that was the only fortunate thing to happen to him. Finally, Sohei was enlisted as an assistant at a military medical institution. There, however, he found something even worse than the low, scorned, depressing customs of Onigafuchi Village in the research they were carrying out. Could that have been, well, you know, the bacteriological core in the old Japanese army, whatever? Keiichi-kun, you've heard of that? What could it be? Pretty sure it was Unit 731. It was a nightmare unit that devoted itself to researching terrifying bacteriological weapons to break the deadlock in the war. They used many innocent people as fodder for horrible human experiments. They methodically observed how many days a new strain would take to kill its victims, how many days it would be when injected, how many days it would be when swallowed. They dissected many people to find that out. Sometimes they wouldn't bother waiting until they were dead, and dissected them while they were still alive. They'd strap them into centrifuges while still alive, crush them into decompression chambers while still alive. When a live human decompresses, all the holes in their body get pushed outwards, and all their intestines get pushed out of their anus like a snake winding out of it. I have a feeling I saw something like that on a documentary once. That makes me sick. And they still hate Hinemizawa, huh? You said it. Mion agreed with me, giving a faint and sad smile. It wasn't much in the way of communication, but for some reason I was happy to have it right now. The unit Sohei was in did way kinder research than that. They were researching concrete methods for reducing the difficulty of delivering food on the battlefield. The military's designs at the start of the war completely fell apart, and a chronic food shortage broke out all over the battlefront. The food shortage led to malnutrition, and as their natural resistances lowered, the soldiers fell to one disease after another. Spirit and morale lowered as well. They wouldn't be able to maintain their forces at this rate. Apparently that's where the research started. At first it was to find methods of delivering food to battlefields. It was very broad and included things from Violent methods like stealing it from citizens to survival methods like how to cook unfamiliar insects and plant life. As they were working out the details, they kept straying off course and going out of control until, finally, they knocked down a door called Taboo. What do you think the easiest source of protein on a battlefield is? Oh god, Rena and I knew the answer without being told. So, we didn't answer. That's right. They were researching ways to handle using humans as food. Fighting onwards, sometimes eating the flesh of enemies and sometimes that of allies, became the ultimate service paid to their country. They were deathly serious about this doctrine. It really is a riot. My grandfather was despised as someone who ate human flesh, and yet they had gone above and beyond that. Apparently, he always thought about it too. Even if he was a vulgar man-eating demon, They were far more ugly demons than he. So no matter how much he was scorned, he wouldn't put up with it. At last, they had a handful of test prototypes. When the soldiers learned it was human flesh, however, the scientists couldn't make anyone eat it. So it was apparently sent to the front lines. The cans were labeled meat substitutes, and so that they wouldn't accidentally eat it themselves, they stamped the bottoms with a circle. The starved soldiers on the front lines apparently loved all the prototypes they were sent. Among them, those who cooked it in soy sauce, like it was sukiyaki, loved it the most. Come on, Michan, stop! I'm I'm getting sick to my stomach. Oh, that was Rena. Sorry. Come on, Michan, stop! I'm getting sick to my stomach. Rena really was pale faced, and she looked like she was having difficulty continuing to sit on her knees. Mion looked like she had more to say, but she sighed lightly and stopped there. Then oh, and those can- canned goods that your grandpa bought, brought back. I don't know if it's true. Sohei denied it was human flesh up until the day he died. However, those who begrudged Hinamizawa's sudden revival called him a savage for making a fortune from selling human flesh. And the villagers began to be scorned again. They returned to a time when, where children would be jeered at and have rocks thrown at them. The stifling silence came back. What a seriously hopeless and sad story it was. They discriminated, were discriminated against, discriminated, and were discriminated against. How much they attach worth and rank to it. Why can't they live without looking down on people? Why can't everyone enjoy life together? I didn't know. 
My grandmother, the family head, once told the children of the village this. If they throw a stone at one of you, then two of you must throw stones back. The children asked her, what if they threw stones at two of us? Of course, the answer was simple. If they throw stones at two of you, throw them back with four. If they chase eight of you with sticks, drive them off with sixteen. If they slander thirty of you, yell back with sixty. Finally, the children asked, what if we're attacked by a thousand people? Even that answer was simple. If a thousand people attack you, then everyone in Hinamizawa will stand up against them. It was a manifesto to spur people into action. My grandmother rose up not only as the leader of the Sonozaki house, but as the mother of Hinamizawa. It was halfway through 1955. It was a time when riots over the treaty with the U.S. were rampant, a time of battle and action. The people of Hinamizawa joined together and fought, treating unfair discrimination toward one as a crime against them all. It didn't matter whether that one was a child or an adult. If they heard that a child had been told off, then everyone would crowd the house of the perpetrator, acting as a whole. If they heard an adult had been treated unfairly, men and women, young and old, would all band together and stand up against it. If you meddled with people from Hinamizawa, you would be in trouble. They probably figured that if they could make others think that, they'd win. Keichan, do you remember how many people came to help you when you got involved with those delinquents in town? Ugh. I recalled how much of an impression it had left on me. That the people of Hinomizawa boldly came to my rescue, and yet the people of Okonomiya averted their eyes so they wouldn't get involved. My grandmother fought, and my parents carried on the fight. At last, peace returned to Hinamizawa. Of course, that peace had been placed on a razor's edge. When you consider the previous hundred years of history, the tranquility now can only be called a chance interval, standing on uneven scales. Why? Could I really have an opinion on such a long and difficult history when I hadn't moved here more than a year ago? Yes, I said it anyway. Why can't everyone just live in peace? What happened to those old stories of Oyashiro sama that I heard from Takano san? Man and demon joining hands and living together in harmony? Didn't Oyashiro sama remain in this world to watch over that? It's a fairy tale. I mean, that even if those people and the demons were real, the Oyashiro-sama who mediated between them wasn't. Is that, is that why Oyashiro-sama's curse happens? A cool gust of wind blows in from outside, fluttering Mion's long and beautifully clear hair. Mion kept refreshing her smile without answering and didn't even change her expression, but even that became a silent answer. So that Hinamizawa village might once more be like Onigafuchi village. So that we may again be a sacred existence worthy of worship. That was the earnest wish of our ancestors in Onigafuchi. And the mission of those who inherit the demon in the Sonozaki main family. Those who in inherit the demon? For generations, the Sonozaki family has had a custom of including the character for demon in the leader's names. If you write out my name on your hand, it should appear plain as day. I trace out the word Mio in the palm of my hand, and... Oh, she's right. The character for demon is right there. Not only in my name, either. The demon is engraved on my body as well. When she said that, she quietly rose and began to lay her hand on her clothing. It's okay, Michan. You don't need to show us, okay? Thank you. Convenient. All right. Just that exchange, I guessed what she meant. Most likely, somewhere on her body, there was a permanent seal, such as a tattoo or marking, that proved she inherited the demon. Mion didn't sit back down. She smoothly opened the paper door onto the porch. A refreshing breeze began to cleanse the damp air filling the room. Mion quietly gazed out at the wide yard for quite a while, and on her shoulders was something I could never imagine the normal Mion carrying. It was the heavy, heavy, truly heavy history of Hinamizawa, no of Onigafuchi weighing down on them. What kind of words could I possibly say to a Mion like that? Rena wasn't saying anything to her either. Only the voices of the cicadas drowned out the silence. And at last, after a long period of nothing, Mion murmured. The serial incidents happening over the past five years? I was directly related to some of them, and indirectly to others. 
Some were not the Sonozaki family, but were rather related to the others, like the Kimiyoshi family and the Furude family. I think I was at the center of all of them. She said it without turning around, with her back to us. At some point her tone of voice had gone back to being the me own we knew. I have faith in what I've done, and I don't feel any guilt. If I did, perhaps it would be that I will have to leave the stage before the air is decided. If I'm caught and tried in a court of law, then I suppose that's how it works nowadays. Being able to retire with Hinamizawa at the most peaceful it's been in a hundred years could be the happiest thing that's ever happened to any of the Sonozaki leaders of past generations. Mio leaned a shoulder against the paper door, then slid down it and flopped on the ground. It was an act of such resignation that just seeing it made me hurt inside. The numerous terrible crimes Mion had been a part of suddenly began to fade from my mind. Hey, Mion, I... You don't care what happens after this. Can you just try to struggle as much as you can? Can you try to run away? As soon as I began to think that way, Rena's ringing voice filled the room. But Rika-chan and Sadoko-chan, you killed them, didn't you, Mi-chan? The sharp points of her words stabbed into my chest despite not being directed at me. I'm not saying that it's okay if you killed other people. Regardless, Mi-chan, you killed Rika-chan and Sadoko-chan. Rena's words were more biting than any I had ever heard. Even now that we all knew the heavy history pressing down on Mion's shoulders, she had criticized her for killing our friends. Just as I bear the duty of the Sonozaki family, Rika-chan bore the duty of the Furude family. That duty was to protect the ritual storehouse. My chest tightened. I learned around last year that Rika-chan had said something about it. The bars on the storehouse door were too heavy for her, and she wanted to change them to a simpler lock and key. Even the priest before her had complained about it being heavy. He was very aware of how hard it was for Rika-chan. I will make sure to guard it, so I want to replace the lock with something lighter. Oh. That, that would have been Rika. Saying that, and then Mion continuing here. I replied on behalf of the Sonozaki family leader. Ever since the string of freak death incidents, there seem to be people who are insolent towards Oyashiro-sama, so you shouldn't replace the lock with a simpler one. That said, the leader of the Kimiyoshi family, old man Kimiyoshi, he... If it's that difficult for you, Rika-chan, then I think it's okay to replace the lock, he said. The very fact that it was locked with a key was an indication of it being somewhere you mustn't enter. There's nobody bad enough to break through it and go inside, he said. Even if we were alike as leaders, I couldn't find it in me to argue with old man Kimiyoshi since I owed him so much. In the end, we decided to change out the lock on the storehouse and switched it to a really cheap and light padlock. Old man, is this really all right? Nana says that if possible, we should keep the lock the same. It'll be all right. You're quite the worry, Wart. If something happens, this old man will take all the responsibility. Do you promise? You mean that you'll take responsibility as the leader of the Kimiyoshi family, right? You should be well aware of how sacred the things inside really are. It's okay. There aren't any bad cats in Hinamizawa who would open the lock and break in. Meow, meow. Ugh. Ugh. Sobs oh. escaped from my mouth. Something hot and wet dripped down in spades and fell onto the tatami mat. I had already heard of the thieves entering the ritual storehouse during the Watanagashi festival. There were four of them. We decided to act within the day. At the same time, we needed to demand that the ones who allowed the thieves to break in, Rika-chan of the Furude family and old man Kimiyoshi, take responsibility. My tears dripped and dropped, dripped and dropped. Until just now, I decided that it was Mion's fault that she killed Rika-chan and the others. But that was wrong. The one who killed them wasn't Mion, it was me. I might as well have killed them. Keichi-kun. I had a chance to stop this tragedy from happening, and yet I didn't. Cheap curiosity got the better of me, and I didn't. If at the time I had stopped us from sneaking into the ritual storehouse, Rika-chan and the others wouldn't have had to die. If I had, then nothing would have happened. We would be spending our days having lots of fun like we always did. I was an idiot. By shedding tears, I could take it all back, then I would have filled up the room with them. However, such a meager act wouldn't be enough to redeem myself for the crime I've committed. Kei-chan, you're not at fault. 
Mion gently began to speak to me as if trying to reason with me. As the leader of the Sonozaki family, I needed to act, but given the history of the Sonozaki family, thinking about it now, it's no big deal. Maybe I should have saved my friends, even if it meant casting all that aside. I yielded to it, and that's why I killed those two. I, Mio and Sonozaki, and nobody else killed them. I had hundreds of chances to stop it, but I didn't stop. I gave in to the easy role that was handed to me and abandoned all thought of fighting for my friends. So this is my crime. I killed them. Mio and Sonozaki, with these hands, killed them. And nothing whatsoever changed. Nothing! <laughs> Uh, I don't mean to interrupt this, but is she aware that, she, like, as soon as Rena said Oishi's name, is she aware that she's probably on mic? <laughs> I'm, I'm just, just, could you lay it on a little thicker? Her masochistic laughter was sad, especially because Mion boasted in club that she would turn the tables on whatever predicaments presented themselves. It was so painful. Still, Michan, you saved one person of your own volition. Duh? As I looked at her surprised, Rena stuck her finger right at my forehead. You left Keichi Kun alive. As strong as you are, Michan, it would have been no trouble for you, but you didn't kill him. That's right. Mion was so cunning that no one could stand up to her. Even at our club, if she had seriously tried to kill me, I would have been dealt with on the very first night. So many people had been sacrificed, but I was always left out in the cold. When did I first realize that even though people were disappearing one after the other, for some reason I had this vague belief that only I would be left alive? Hmm. Why didn't I kill him? As a demon, I can't even begin to guess. Maybe Mion had some reason she didn't want to kill you. What is that supposed to mean? Shh. Mion put a finger to her lips to say that Rena didn't need to talk. Is Oishi waiting outside? Yes. Any way out? No, they said they have the place surrounded. It seemed like they called a lot of cars over the radio. I think they have your entire property surrounded. Mion fell silent. Rena's merciless words felt cruel, but they weren't meant to be. Maybe they were trying to lessen her good friend's pain. If only by a little. Maybe they were considerate, like she was trying to help. Please, turn yourself in. Mion didn't open her mouth, but she smiled. Just a little. We'll go with you. We'll never leave a friend by herself. <laughs> Crying children and Rena are the only things I can't beat. <laughs> she rose, scratching her head. Her face had returned entirely to that of the usual Mion. I'm well aware of how serious my own crimes are. Even if they accept me turning myself in, I'll probably never be able to come back here. I couldn't say anything. The number of deaths Mion was involved in was just too large. So much so that maybe recommending that she turned herself in was, in a way, extremely cruel. So I'd like you to hear one last selfish request. What is it? 30 minutes is fine. Just let me have some time alone with Keichan. What? My name suddenly came up and it looked like I was the only one surprised about that. Hey, Chikun, is that okay with you? If you don't want to, then I won't make you. <laughs> You're right, it's okay if you don't want to. After all, I'm a demon, and Keichan is a bona fide human who moved here from somewhere else. For us to be compatible as long as Oyashiro-sama doesn't exist to mediate, simply isn't possible. Wait, what do you- is, I feel like there's a subtext between that you two are mentioning that I'm completely <laughs> missing here. What's going on? There was no reason for me to hesitate. Mion had been engulfed by heavy, unopposable tradition. The one who had forced her to kill her friends with her own hands, that was me and me alone. In fact, with me cornered, it would have been okay for her to blame me. However, she didn't say one word of blame. Far from it, I was guilty of the same crime, and she let me go. I mean, to the fate she could not oppose, she saved me alone. I didn't know whether I should be thankful for that. But thinking upon it now, I didn't know how much easier it would be if I were to be granted the same punishment as Rika-chan and the others. The only thing I knew for sure was that I had an equal duty to bear the sins that Mion shouldered. So when it came to her last request, there was no reason for me to hesitate. Alright, it's fine. 
Thank you. I'd like to thank you too, Keichi-kun. Lena stood up. Looked like she would keep her promise with Mio and leave. Ah, uh, it's fine, Rena. You can wait right here. I just want to go around the yard with Keichan. If you're bored, you can go to my room. You can read any manga you like. Ah, and if there are any volumes you like, you might as well take them. I don't want to. Michan's books belong to Michan. Rena couldn't bring them back home with her so freely. <laughs> You're such a good kid. Only at times like this. Mion took Rena's head and rubbed it violently like I always did. <clears throat> okay. Let's go, Keichan. I began to walk after Mion, who headed for the hallway, when Rena silently stopped me. Take care of Michan. Yeah. Michan really does believe she won't ever be able to come back. I didn't know much about laws, but with as many deaths as she'd been involved in, the chances of her escaping a heavy punishment seemed non-existent. Watch out that she doesn't do anything rash, okay? Mion might not surrender herself to justice, but instead choose to put an end to things herself. Rena had already thought that far ahead. Right, I won't let that happen. Rena rubbed at her tears, which had fallen without me noticing them. Okay, then go after her. I nodded and followed Mion, who had disappeared out of the front door. I could clearly hear Rena sobbing from the other side of the paper door. Why was Mi-chan made a successor to demons? Maybe it just had to happen that way, but it's just so awful. Something hot burned down my cheeks. They were my tears. And I fiercely wiped them away. This was the last of my time I could offer to Mion. So I absolutely did not want to let her see my tears during it. Mion was already waiting outside the door. What? So that's a lot. That's a whole lot to take in. Um. Wow. <laughs> Sorry. My so the bad. achievement we just got was called Sorry About That. Twisted Sisters was the description for it. I killed them all. Sorry. Yeah. Whoopsie. The Huh. That's a whole lot to take in all at once. Um, I think maybe I save my thoughts on all this for the next episode. We'll just keep going for now, see how far we get. All right. Smash, smash, smash that like, comment, and subscribe.